We have the Sigma 35mm 1.4, the Sony 35 1.8 and the Samyang 35 1.8. All for Sony full frame E mount of course. And I've decided to keep one of these lenses, but that doesn't mean it's also the one you should buy. I recently switched from Canon to Sony and I've switched between systems a few times in my career. Now, every time I made a switch like that, I had to buy new lenses. And the first lens that I buy for every new camera system is a 35mm. It's my favorite focal length, the perfect all-round lens. I even shot entire documentary series and assignments with just a 35mm. So, I mean, I like 35mm lenses. And now that I've switched to Sony, here I am again deciding between a few 35mm lenses. These are all, well, not all budget options, but all under a thousand dollars. Okay, so let's compare these lenses and find out which one you should buy. I'm using the Sony right now to film this, but I'll switch to the Sigma and the Samyang during the video, so you can see them all. When it comes to build quality, the Sigma is... Yeah, what can I say? You could easily kill someone with this lens, and I'm not even joking. It feels like a big chunk of metal and glass, it's heavy, and if you throw this at someone's head, dead in an instant, I'm pretty sure. But I'm not sure if that's a good thing. I mean, it does feel good as in quality, but maybe it's a bit too much, especially if you plan on traveling with it. It's also front heavy when mounted on my Sony a7S III, but it does feel very durable and high quality. And then all the way on the other side is the Samyang. It's not that it feels super cheap, but definitely more plasticky, and also the finishing is not top notch. But I mean, this is half the price of the Sigma, so that's expected. And then finally, we have the Sony on my camera right now. And just like the price is closer to the price of the Sigma, the build quality also is. It feels similar, but lighter. It also feels a lot more balanced when mounted on my camera compared to the Sigma. Okay, and then when we compare the weather ceiling, the Sony comes out as a winner. But I have to say that it's pretty confusing what I found on the internet. From what I understand, the Sony has the best weather ceiling, but don't expect that it can handle heavy rain or storm. The Sigma has mild to no weather ceiling and then the Samyang floats somewhere in between. All in all, it seems like what you pay is what you get when it comes to build quality. Weather ceiling, not so much. Look, I'm not Gerald Undone, okay? So if you want to know the exact differences in sharpness or chromatic aberration, coma smearing, or if you want to know what kind of focusing motor each lens has, I'll link to one of Gerald's videos in the description and also one from Christopher Frost. Go check them out and you'll learn a ton about these lenses. They'll give you all the technical details. Now, I might not be such a wizard when it comes to the technical details like those guys, but that doesn't mean I don't care about image quality. I do care about image quality. And honestly, I like the image quality of all of these lenses. I think the Sigma at 1.8 is a tad sharper in the corners than the Sony and the Samyang, but when we stop down to 2.8, the difference is almost not noticeable. For me, the difference is insignificant. Also purple fringing, there is purple fringing, but for lenses in this price range, it's expected and not a problem at all. Again, for me at least. And when stopped down, most of these problems disappear. If we have to decide on a winner, the Sigma would be it, because it's a tad sharper and it has two thirds of a stop advantage in low light. So if you're a photographer, especially a low light photographer, that's definitely a plus. Now, the Sony on the other hand, has the shortest minimal focusing distance and the image quality at such short distances is really good. But overall, they're all really good. The photo autofocus of all of these lenses is really good. I don't feel like there's one that does significantly better or worse. They all catch the eye accurately. But the real difference appears when we switch to video mode. For the Samyang, the face detection autofocus is not bad, but sometimes it struggles a bit and starts hunting. But again, what you pay is what you get, and it's definitely not unusable. Definitely not. The Sigma is a lot better, but it feels a bit choppy sometimes, not smooth. It depends on how fast your subject moves. But the clear winner here is the Sony. The autofocus in video mode is super smooth and feels almost organic, if that's a word I can use here, I don't know. And on top of all that, it's also super quiet, whereas the Sigma 
It's not loud, but it's a bit more noisy. I don't think you're gonna pick it up with your microphone unless you put it really close and point it at the lens. But just so you know, it's a bit louder. And the Samyang is actually also just as quiet as the Sony. And when we switch to manual focus, the Sony again is the winner. The focus ring is super smooth and as Gerald Undone pointed out, it's completely linear, which means you can get accurate, repeatable focus. The focus ring on the Sigma is also pretty good, but definitely not as good as the Sony. It's not as smooth and as comfortable. And then we have the Samyang. It's okay, maybe even better than the Sigma, but not as good as the Sony. To me, it feels like the focus ring of the Sigma and the Samyang, they grind a little bit more. It's definitely not like it feels like there's sand in between somewhere, but there's definitely a slight grind. And the focus ring on the Samyang is actually not a focus ring, it's a control ring that you can use to focus, but also to control the aperture, depending on the mode you set it here. And then to make it very clear that for video, there's only one option, the Sony also doesn't suffer from focus breathing as much. It's almost non-existent, whereas the other two breathe a lot more, as you can see here. Focus breathing is when it seems like the lens is zooming in and out, when it's actually just focusing. So, when it comes to video, there are significant differences between these three lenses. So for me, it's pretty clear I'm gonna keep the Sony because it's the best all-round package, photo and video. It falls a little bit behind in the photo department when compared to the Sigma, but that's only when you compare side by side, zoomed in, and what you get in return on the video side makes up for that. So I would say if you're into video, the best option is the Sony. And if you're into video and photography, the Sigma is a good option. But I would still go for the Sony because you get a lot more on the video side in return for what you lose on the photography side. Now photographers, especially low light photographers, I think the Sigma is a very, very good lens. Just remember that there's no weather ceiling and it's also pretty heavy. So travel photographers, beware. Maybe you should consider the Sony after all. And does that mean that the Samyang is poop? No, not at all. If you have the budget and you're willing to spend it, then the Sony and the Sigma are definitely better options. But if you don't have the budget or if you're looking for a cheap option for your hobby, you will without a doubt enjoy the Samyang. For that price, it's also a really, really good lens. But okay, so Sony 35mm, welcome to the family. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna enjoy this lens. If you have any questions about these lenses, just ask me in the comments or on Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, click all the buttons at once, okay? Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.